Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Kitchen. Do you remember the propositional parse trees that we did back in video 48? What we did is developed a very botanical method for breaking down a complex formula into its component pieces so that you could see how it was constructed. The formula was the roots of the tree and then we kind of unwound it until we got to the propositional atoms, which were the leaves. We can do exactly the same thing with predicate logic. And I'm just going to quickly kind of remind you of what we did in video 48 and show how you can expand this to our new language that we have. So remember that we have atomic formulas and complex formulas exactly the same way that we had in the propositional case. Even though our atomic formulas themselves have this internal structure, we're not going to worry about that. Once we reach the level of an atom, that's enough. So let me get up my whiteboard. There we are. And basically the definition is that, so I'm not going to give this in as full of detail with the formal, you know, blah, 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 because it's exactly the same root definition, haha, as in uh, video 48. I will just kind of remind you of the construction and show how to add in the cases for the new, um, uh, the new quantifiers, the new logical vocabulary that we have. So when we're building one of these parse trees, the root of the parse tree is always the well-formed formula phi that we are parsing. So two cases, phi is an atomic formula in which case it is a leaf, leaf, and we do nothing. In that case, the root of the tree and the leaf of the tree just are the same. The other case is that phi is complex. So if it is complex, this means that it is built up out of our logical operators from other formulas, which themselves may be complex or may be atomic. So if it's, uh, so in this case, and it is not a leaf. We have, let's see, six options. So phi could be of the form, so of the form not psi. It could be psi one and psi two, psi, bleh psi one or psi two, psi one implies psi two. And in this case, the parse tree is built exactly the way that it is for the propositional case. So I'm not even gonna go over those. Or it is of the form for all x psi or exists x psi. In that case, so if it is of the form for all x psi or exists x psi, then we draw one branch coming up from the node that we are at from, so from the node labeled with phi and at the end of that branch, we have a node labeled with just psi. So unsurprisingly, the quantifiers work like negation does because they are both unary operators. So let's just do a very quick example. Say that I've got for all x, there is a y, r x y or r y x. If that is the case, then R X X. So you don't need to worry about what this sentence says because parse trees are a purely syntactic thing. We're only looking at the structure of the sentence. So this is not an atom. Therefore, the root of the tree will have branches growing out of it. The first connective that we have is the quantifier. So we draw one branch up, remove that connective and write down what is left. So 
there is a y, rxy or ryx implies rxx. Now, this existential quantifier is our next connective. So again, we have just one branch. Let's see if I can draw my branches small enough to fit everything. And we have rxy or ryx implies rxx. Now we are at the level of propositional combinations. This is a um, conditional that has rxx on one branch and rxy or ryx on another. Here we have a leaf. Let's, yeah, that's a rather attractive looking leaf because rxx, even though it has internal structure to it, it's a binary relation with two variables, it forms an atomic formula. So we can stop at that point. Over here though, we've got this disjunction. So we need to split our branches again. So we have ryx on one branch and rxy on the other. And again, these are both leaves. So there's a nice leaf. Let's do a fancy little maple leaf of some type. Good enough. There we have it. Here is our root. Here is our tree ending in rxy, ryx, and rxx as our atomic formulas, which are our leaves. So basically just the same as propositional proof trees, except our atoms are more complex than just individual letters. And we have to add the clauses for what to do when you have a universal quantifier or an existential one. But that's it. Predicate proof trees are not any harder than the propositional ones. So go ahead, write some sentences down, draw yourself some pretty trees. It's just a good way of helping you to see how the formulas are constructed and at any given stage, what the main connective or the main operator is. Yeah, that's all I have to say about parse trees. We'll talk more about a different topic in the next videos. See you then, bye.